Now that we have a secure site, let's go ahead and use it to build a Chrome extension. And I'm going to build an extension version of my dict bookmarklet from before. And the advantage of having it as an extension is that it's really easy to install into Chrome on other computers, easier than installing a bookmarklet. So what I'm going to do is, first thing is, uh, I'm going to need some icons for my extension. And uh, I've already drawn some for you and uploaded them to the bonus Lesson 10 starter files. So I'm going to start by clicking on Set of Icon Images for the dict extension. So here are my dict icons.zip and I'm just going to go ahead and extract to dict icons. And uh, I need to put this project somewhere, this extension. So um, let me just go ahead. I'm going to leave it in my downloads for now. Um, but I'm going to change the name of the folder to dict extension. And then I'm going to need some of the files from my dict bookmarklet. So here I am in XAMPP htdocs dict. And the files that I need are dict.js and dict.css. Oh, those should have gone in here. And I don't need the rest of these. So instead of having a bookmarklet, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another JavaScript file. And uh, we'll get to that in a little while. So the first thing I need is a JSON manifest file. So in Notepad++, I'm going to do File, Save As, and I'm going to save it into dict extension manifest.json. So this is going to be a JSON object. And some of these fields are required. So let me actually go and pull up the documentation here. So I'm going to search for Chrome extension manifest. And here's the manifest file format. So the required ones are manifest version name and version. So manifest version is 2, comma, name, let's say, dictionary extension. Actually, let's just call it dictionary because it's going to be an extension. And the uh, version is going to be whatever I want it to be. So we'll go ahead and say version 0 0.1 for pre-release. And then recommended are default locale description and icons. So default locale is in and description use the WordNet dictionary to look up definition of selected words on a page. And then icons and I'm going to specify different icon sizes as properties on an object. So I need a 16 pixel version, which is going to be this thing right here, icon-16.png. And there's a 48. and 128. And I got a little error there. Okay, so those are the three icons. And then I can either have a page action that only runs on specific pages that match a pattern, or I can have a browser action that gets um, that's available for all pages. 
and I want this to be a browser action. So let's go ahead and make a browser action. And here's the action object, and it's going to have two things. It's going to have a default icon, which is actually going to be the same as what I have here. Just tab that over one. And then it also has a default title. Make sure. I'm just double checking that it's default title. Yeah, default title. Which is dictionary. So there's my browser action. And then most of the rest of these are all optional. The only one that I really need is this background right here. So let's go ahead and background. This is the thing that sets up the button to listen for clicks. And so I'm going to give it the name of the JavaScript file. And I only have one file to run. And then persistent is going to be false. So I also need permissions. So these are the permissions I'm giving to the extension. And the extension, these are square brackets. So this is an array of permissions. First thing it needs is access to tabs. Um, so those are the browser tabs because I have to load the page associated with the browser tab. And then I want to allow this to run an HTTP colon slash slash any host, any path. And then I also want to let it run on HTTPS colon slash slash any host, any path. The only other thing is a home page URL, which is optional. I'm going to go ahead and specify home page URL. And that's going to be HTTP colon slash slash www.cis233w.xyz slash dict. OK, so that should be everything for my manifest. And now I just need to create this uh, background.js file. So let me open a new tab, save this as in my dict extension folder, background.js. OK, so all I need to do here is add an event listener to the extension button. So that's going to be chrome.browseraction dot on clicked dot add listener and then a function that gets run when that happens and it's going to get the tab as an argument so what I want to do is say chrome dot tabs insert oops insert CSS, tab.id, and then specify the location of my CSS file, which is dict.css. So that's how you load the CSS sheet into the current tab. And then chrome.tabs.execute script tab.id, file colon, dict.js. 
So that's basically doing the same thing as my bookmarklet was doing. It's loading the CSS and the JavaScript into the current page. And then the last thing that the JavaScript does is um, execute the word lookup. So now I need to make one change to my dict.js, which is down here where I was fetching word lookup. So instead of using localhost, I want to use my real name. And then I don't want to specify a uh, protocol. So I want this to work with either HTTP or HTTPS. So I'm not going to specify a protocol at all. And whichever one I'm currently using on the page, that's the one it's going to use here. This is a relative URL. And then for the host name, that's going to be www.cis233w.xyz. And then there's going to be a dict folder inside of there with wordlookup.php. So let's go ahead and make that folder. Now, in uh, one of the earlier videos, I created a CIS233W folder. And uh, this is actually the home page where it goes to when I just go to CIS233W.xyz. So let's go ahead and CIS233W.xyz. There's my home page. And then inside of there is a dict folder that has wordlookup.php. So that's what's actually going to catch my script um, on the other side. When I run my extension, rather, it's going to fetch the word lookup from here. So just making sure that that's there, and it is. So I think I have everything for my extension now. So let's go ahead and import this extension. And the way I do that is I go to Settings, Extensions, and what I have right now is known as an unpacked extension because it's a directory with some files in it. And in order to load an unpacked extension, you have to check this developer mode checkbox right here. And that creates some options for you. So one of the options is load unpacked extension. And then I browse to my dict extension folder inside of downloads and say OK. So I have an error, failed to load extension, required value version is missing or invalid. OK, so I forgot to specify. Oh, version must be between 1 and 4 dot separated integers. I think I needed to double quote that, actually. So let's go ahead and double quote that. And then I'm going to uh, retry. So default locale was specified, but locale's subtree is missing. Let me actually double check that. So I'm going to go to manifest file and uh, look for locale here. specifies the subdirectory of locales that contains the default strings for this extension. So I think I just don't want this at all, really. So I'm just going to cut that line out and then retry. OK, so there's my extension, and it appears here. So this is the 48 pixel version, and this is the 16 pixel version. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let's go to uh, Wikipedia. And pick a page in English at random. So what is a surname? So I'm going to double click that to select it and hit dict. Good. So that worked. Um, 
What's a javelin? So this all seems to work. Great. So that's an unpacked extension. And then to pack it into a form that I can upload to the Chrome store, um, I'm going to click this pack extension button. So I give it the root directory, which is this dict extension folder. And then uh, I'm going to just leave the private key file out and hit pack extension. So it created the packed extension itself. And it also created this PEM file, which is a uh, um, private key for the extension. So I need this file if I ever want to update the extension. And then this is the extension itself. So I click OK. And then if I remove my unpacked extension and turn off developer mode, the way I would install this is I'm going to go to my CRX file and just drag and drop it onto the extensions page. Add extension. Use this extension by clicking on this icon. So there's the icon. Here it is in the list of extensions. And uh, let's give it a shot. No definition for that one. There. So an accordionist is a musician who plays the accordion. <laughs> 